What's going on guys, this is Bobby Douglas, welcome to another 2020 NBA Draft Prospect full game video breakdown. Today we're going to be taking a look at Vanderbilt point guard Saban Lee. Uh, Saban Lee just finished up his junior season for the Commodores and he had a pretty productive overall year. He averaged around 18 points a game while also chipping in 4.2 assists and I think 3.5 rebounds as well, all on 48% shooting. He's a guy who most likely will go into the late second round slash undrafted territory of this year's draft. Um, he's a guy, the more I watch him, the more I do like him. Right now, I have him around this late 70s on my big board. But, um, you know, overall, there are some concerns. He doesn't really uh, have a reliable jump shot from the outside right now. Just a 32% three-point shooter this past season at Vanderbilt. And his mechanics also are a little bit clunky. So that's something to worry about, especially being a 6'2 guard. Despite his 6'2 frame, though, he does have a very, really nice 6'8 wingspan, I think. And so you can just see him right here. Uh, you can see how long his arms are. So definitely longer than his height would suggest. And yeah, I'm excited to get into this game with you guys. This is the game against Kentucky, where Lee's going to have 21 points and I believe four assists and two rebounds. So yeah, I'm excited to watch this one and let's go. He's going to be number zero in the black. So he'll be starting off guarding Ash and Hagen's. Lee's known as a really good overall athlete, and he's also a very good point-of-attack defender. Again, uses that wide frame to kind of bully smaller guards, especially on top of the, uh, uh, on top on the perimeter. And so Vanderbilt's doing a little bit of a, looks like a little bit of a zone on that opening uh, possession for against Kentucky. But um, yeah, remember Vanderbilt's defensive scheme is basically a no middle. We talked about this when Aaron Neesmith, when the Aaron Neesmith video was released. Um, so basically, they're trying to force people away from the middle. And so it does sometimes look like it's a defensive breakdown on a certain player. But oftentimes, it's also a result of the scheme and just not... And that's where they're trying to force him to go. So just keep that in mind when you watch him. So here we go. So he hasn't really done much offensively. He had a nice little back cut that he stopped halfway. Maybe could have gotten a drive there, but... Or maybe could have gotten a pass, but... Uh, overall, probably made the right decision. And here he is on Ashton Hagens again. And I do like how he's just into grilled defenders. Again, pretty good overall stance. Moves his feet well. Short and choppy. Raises his arms out. Uses that length to his advantage. And so that's why I do think he might be a little bit more versatile defensively than what his height would suggest. Just because of that wingspan and that athleticism. Obviously, he should probably put on some weight. Um, just to be able to hang with guys. Um, maybe a position up. But overall, I do think his versatility is a little bit underrated at this point. And right there, you see a little Chris Paul back screen for the big man. And here we go him with him on the ball. Nothing much going on yet with his offense. And here he's going to get a pin down. So again, Nick Richards shouldn't be biting on that shot fake because Lee's not really a big, big time three point shooter, as I mentioned earlier. Just keep that in mind. Here we go. So Lee's in the corner, and there's Scottie Pippen Jr. Going to miss that mid-range pull-up, and a turnover on Dylan Disu. Lee grabbed the rebound right there, and here he comes on the push. That's a pretty nice cross-court transition pass. And right there, just going to result in a missed three. And again, his he's very good at making basic reads out of pick and roll and in transition. Right there, that's just pretty much inexcusable. I don't know if that was part of the scheme or if it's just lack of foot speed, but it didn't even look like he moved, tried to move his feet there to stay in front of Higgins. But, um, you know, he's very good at making these basic pick and roll reads. I would say he's a slightly above average as a distributor. He's not a guy who's going to make a ton of super crazy high-level passes. Right there, really nice job just getting to his right hand and finishing with that floater. And again, still shot 48% on the season despite shooting 38 or 32% from three. So he does finish at the rim extremely well for a guy his size. And again, he's physical. He can bang into guys well. So that's something to like about Lee. But uh, getting back to my earlier point, though, it's just, um, you know, he's a very good basic pick and roll guy, basic... Uh, basic distributor. He's not going to hurt you. It's just he doesn't have that like next level passing ability, even though he's a very smart player. Looks like he draw, drew a foul baseline there, so I will skip ahead. And yeah, so right here, I don't know. I think that must have been the scheme because Lee barely moved his feet there.
nice little pocket pass to Disu from Scottie Pippen Jr. And that's going to be a foul. Yeah. So I will skip ahead these free throws. And you can see just picking up pretty much half court extended, so that's good. And here he's on the ball. Again, really nice shot moving his feet right there. So, again, I think that play we saw earlier was just scheme. Scheme-oriented more than um, Lee-oriented. Because we saw right there, he moved his feet really well. And, again, I like how he gets big and low on defense. You know, he just, he just plays a lot bigger than his size would suggest. Which I think is really, really important for a guy like Lee to do. Good job because kind of ducking down and trying to disrupt quickly. Did a nice job of that. Quickly couldn't really get anything going either. Right there, maybe you want to see him uh, recognize that uh, double team help rotation a little bit quicker. And that's one of the things that he does need to work on. His off-ball defense could be a little bit better, could be a, bit, a little bit more alert. Here's with the ball in his hands into a DHO. And so that's going to be a make. So again, the form is a little bit, the release is a little bit slow. Um, mechanics a little bit clunky. But again, he's really good inside the three-point line. And again, you can see right there, that's another really nice job moving his feet. He's going to get called for the foul there as we head into a media timeout. But, uh, you know, he does have a pretty nice overall sense of how to finish. Just, he's kind of a bucket getter. Again, you average 18 points a game in college, and it's, you need to be able to put the ball in the basket at times. Looks like he's going to cut back door. Nope, he's going to come off a pin down. And here we go. The Vanderbilt, that graphic, the 697 days in, since an SEC win, that'll be up there for a lot of the game. So maybe a little bit late right there on that uh, reach-in on the maxi drive. Like, if he's going to commit, I'd like him to commit a little bit earlier, I would say. Here we go. So Lee's going to... Ooh, he might have had that backdoor cut. It's a nice play from Gisu. And here he is. Again, really solid point of attack defender. Really good length. And here he is leading the break in transition. Let's see what he does here. Let's see if he finishes that. Ooh, that's a tough finish. Um, tough shot, I should say. I like this shot overall, though. Ooh, it's a nice steal, too. And it's going to be a breakaway dunk. Yep. But again, he is pretty good at just kind of slipping into holes uh, going towards the basket, as we saw right there. He just couldn't finish that one. And again, he's one of the better uh, sub-6-3 finishers at the rim that I've seen. So we got an offensive foul here. And here's Lee again. And this is all post the Aaron Neesmith injury. So obviously Lee did have to step up and fill that role. Good job beating his man and attacking the closeout. Looks like he got a foul on quickly. I'm not really sure where the foul came in, but um, whatever. Uh, I'll skip ahead. They might have had Lee on that slip. 
And there is a foul on Kentucky. I will skip ahead. And here we go. Uh, he was out for a few minutes here. So he should be back in right now. Yep, and here he is on Hagen's. And again, super long reach. Good job moving his feet. He'll never really cross his feet. And you can see right there. So maybe it looked like Hagen's, that time they properly executed ice. And so Dylan, uh, Dylan Disu was in the right position. But it could have been a blow by Ash and Hagen's on Saban Lee had Disu not rotated over to execute ice. And so again, that's why Vanderbilt's scheme defensively, it's a little bit hard to tell what's a breakdown individually and what's just a team-oriented scheme. You see right there, good job, Saban Lee, coming from the three-point line, attacking into the perimeter, getting to the basket, and finishing with the right hand. And you can see he's, he's at six points right now, and he's going to finish with 21. And here we go. And so again, there's that uh, reach down from the one pass away position defensively that we saw earlier in this game. And let's see if he gets that rebound. He will. And here he comes in the transition. And again, that's goaltending right there. Yeah, that definitely is goaltending. And again, just nice job. He's not necessarily the quickest guy in terms of just getting the in terms of his first step. But he's just able to really extend over defenses due to his wingspan. And I think that's really impressive because he doesn't have the fastest feet in the world offensively with the ball in his hands. But he is a very good vertical athlete. And again, that wingspan is just such a benefit in terms of being able to finish over longer players. As we should have seen right there, but it was obviously goaltending. So right there, that's not really on him. Uh... You know, it looked like they were playing a little bit of a drop coverage, and I, they just kind of used it. Um, Kentucky just kind of abused it to shoot the pull-up three. We got a moving screen here on Vanderbilt. Here he is again. And again, you can see him kind of trying to force Hagen's to his left hand. And so it kind of looks like he's out of position, but again, that's Vanderbilt's scheme. It's that no middle, just kind of refuse to let um, any handler use a ball screen. And here he is, weak side right now. Good job rotating again. Nice job moving his feet, just being straight up. And again, it almost looks like he could have taken another step. Uh, towards his left to try and even cut off that drive a little bit more. But again, I do think due to his rangy, just his overall rangy um, body type, I do think he'll be able to kind of stay in front of guys and move his feet well uh, on the perimeter. And you can see there he is right now. So he's eight, eight points, four or five from the floor. Hasn't shot a three, I don't think, yet. And the person he's guarding, Ashton Hagens, like he can go under most of these screens because Hagens isn't a good shooter either. So it doesn't. It's not like he has to be uh, right in his grill on ball screens. Right there, they ran a little double drag action for him, and here comes Lee off the ball screen into a kick out, and Disu's going to knock down that three. And again, basic P and R reads, he has no trouble making, and it's just a matter of can he make those spectacular advanced reads that you see from the leagues, uh, from the NBA point guards. And again, I, it all comes down to the jump shot with him because I do think in some se in some lineups he could play off the ball. Right there, good job just staying long, and they call a foul on him, and I don't agree with that at all. Did a good job just kind of expand expanding his body and just kind of walling up. And right there, I'm going to let's watch. Oh, we're not going to see it again, but. And again, there's a pop-up. And, yeah. Again, just basic reads. He's good at those. Leads to a Dylan Disu 3. Here we go. 
And so you can see, so now, so what Vanderbilt's doing, they're running him off the ball, which they did a little bit, what they did do this year with uh, Scottie Pippen Jr. playing point. And I do think if he can really get down that three-point shot, and that's a big if, uh, he definitely can play the one or the two, I think. Good job prodding and probing. And right there, just kind of a silly turnover. Pro looks like he got kind of tangled up uh, with his own feet. And easy gonna yeah, easy dunk for Lee. Right there, just kind of nice job kind of bumping into EJ Montgomery and then just staying with Hagens. Even though he kinda got beat on Hagens' first dribble move. Managed to recover and again that length allows him to make up for lost space. So here he's running along the baseline. Now in the dunker spot, just kind of running the baseline. Kentucky's it looks like in a 2-3. No, they're not. So right there, that's where Saban Lee kind of needs to shoot it. That's a nice little one-handed pass to Pippen. But again, he had that open three-pointer on the wing. And, you know, I do wish he would take those threes. But again, he's just not that uh, confident of a shooter just yet. So we got a push. And here we go. So now they're, uh, Kentucky's having quickly guard Lee. Nothing much going on here. And here he is with the ball. You're going to do a screen rescreen. And again, nice, solid, basic read. It's going to be another assist for Lee. And again, I do like the subtle eye fake that he did give with the uh, bullet pass towards the block on the same side before ultimately deciding to kick it out to the wing for an open three. So again, just good job using subtle eye fakes and ball fakes to get the, to, to get the defense off balance. One thing I would correct about his defense, it tends, it seems that he doesn't, or that he goes into his stance a little bit too early. So a lot of times you'll see, especially in transition, that defenders will run back and not shuffle back. With Lee, it almost seems like he breaks into a shuffle a little bit too early and it allows uh, his man to kind of gain some speed and some space against him. Because I do think he's a very good defender. I just think it's a matter of being able to use that, you know, just those hip turns and being able to uh, sprint and then shuffle and then switch in between the two when needed. So right now he just seems very uh, very reluctant to just break out into a sprint to recover. Right there, he was there on the closeout. Good job just kind of staying down and not biting on that little eye fake from quickly. And then before that, he also made a nice, uh, made a nice play. Didn't really result in anything, but... Uh, he did try to jump a passing lane in a two-on-one situation, which I do like to see. I like that awareness. Going to get a ball screen here. Again, right there, I probably think he probably, yeah, he probably could have gone at Sestina there and just instead of trying to force a kick out into the strong side. Not a lot of space there. I would have liked to see him try and get around Sestina for a bucket there. And Lee is going to be out here for about the remainder of the first half. Uh, he's back in at 37-11, so I will skip ahead here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, so he's inbounding right now, and again, there's 16.8 seconds left here. Not much going on. It's going to be a Vanderbilt 3. Final 5 seconds. And yeah, that's the end of the first half. So I will pause the video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, stay tuned for the second half. And yeah, thank you for watching. We will see you then. And yeah, have a good one.